And here we go. It's another edition of Rock Talk with Bob Bannister right here on CGCM Rock Radio. And joining me this time around, all the way from uh, Melbourne. Isn't that right? Melbourne, I'm catching you in? That's correct. Melbourne, Melbourne Australia is Matt from the band uh, Cicada Stone. How you doing, man? Great, mate. Thanks for um, for having me on the show. Oh, you're quite welcome. And I have to admit, just discovered your material and and I uh, it's almost like a like a landslide coming over here all of a sudden it's just we're just getting slammed with all this great Australian talent there's a lot here there's always been a lot here there's so much great music here you know um unfortunately we're stuck on this big rock um right out in the down the bottom and it's hard to get it out but um it is getting out and uh, and we are uh, we are starting to some focus which is great so why don't you tell us about cicada stone who are you guys uh okay so cicada stone um have been around i think oh geez i forget you know like maybe 2013 i think we formed okay and um you know it was always just kind of like a recording project to start with i always just had songs lying around and um and it was me and my brother basically that sort of drove drove the project and um and we got to a point where we had an album worth of material and just wanted to make a record. There was no plan. We just wanted to make a record, and we just um recruited a drummer and did that. And then through that, we recruited a bass player and then put the record together and and just kind of went out there in the in those um those first sort of three years and uh and then just repeated the process. You know, people have come and gone, um, but the the current lineup is uh. Uh, uh, me and my brother still Mark Robbins. Um, mm -hmm. My son actually Ethan Robbins has joined the band uh, playing drums with us because he's just kick ass. And uh, and Tommy, who was on our last record, is also on our new record. So the, the lineup's been pretty solid for the last few years, which is which is great. And your latest record is called Future Echoes, um, just released not that long ago. Um, would I be remiss to say that I'm hearing a lot of uh, Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots yeah. influence in that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I grew up in that era. You know, um, it's funny when when I was um, playing in bands in that era, uh, everyone sounded like that. You know, and so mm -hmm. you're just you're just kind of like a dime a dozen. You know, um, but um, I never left that era. I'm still in that era. So um, I with this band, it, it, when we first started, people would be like, oh, I haven't heard a band like that in years, you know, <laughs> and it's a bit of a novelty, you know, it would be a bit of a novelty act, you know, uh, yeah. a tribute band that isn't a tribute band, if you know what I mean. Um, yep. uh, and we've just stuck to it and just, just kept it going. So, yeah, those, those the DNA of the 90s is absolutely I'm not even trying to hide it. It is just in there. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's very, there's very STP, A AIC, Soundgarden, uh, all, all those things that are, all those bands that I grew up with um, are just totally in that, in that mix. Absolutely. And like, like I said, I heard it in that one. Uh, your previous record I found was a little more, um, a little more Stone Temple Pilots. But uh, yeah. loving loving the the sound on this current record just took me right back. I, I worked in in Pennsylvania for a couple summers in the early '90s, and that was that was my groove then. And uh, put this on, it's just like wow, that that's a real time trip, man. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, it is a trip, and um, but I, I really feel like we've managed to. I don't know, take the essence of that and just put a, put a little, put our own little spin on it as well. You know, it still mm -hmm. feels quite modern production wise. It feels really modern. Um, uh, and um, yeah, it's a, it's just a nice combination of, of a modern twist with a classic nineties kind of sound. Now you alluded to the fact that, uh, that your brother is in this band as well. And, and now your son. So you're kind of getting into that, uh, the the Youngs territory, the Van Halens territory, a little bit yeah. of the De, De, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of the right. DeLeo's territory as well. You oh, know? totally, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. And the, the with my son, um, you know, that was never it was never planned. You know, like he's 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 on his own musical journey. He's got his own band. He's doing his own thing. But you know, when we were making the record, um, our, our previous drummer. You know, he's a lovely guy, but he just kind of hit a wall, I think. And we were in the studio. We were set up to record this album right at the start. And he's mm -hmm. just gone, I just I just can't. You know, and I could hear. We did one night of recording and it, you know, it was pretty flat. Yeah. And um, and he just wasn't he just wasn't there so he in the right headspace to, to make a record with us. And and so you know, he had to he had to move on. And um and it just left us literally in the uh, in the studio set up with a drum kit going and got a drummer so um in case of well let's just let's get ethan in and let him hit the drums and see what happens for a night <laughs> and uh and he did that and he, he did a great job uh he smashed it and 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 it's and it makes to me it's it makes perfect sense because he's grown up listening to all the stuff that i grew up listening to i just threw it on him you know so um uh so he just knew how to approach the songs really naturally i didn't really have to give him much Mm -hmm. much direct at all which is great he just took to it and and that is that is a, a great moment when you when you realize you know you you passed that torch to the to the next generation to your kids i mean i, I remember my son when he was like 11 or 12 coming to me with uh my copy of of i think it was led zeppelin 4 and handing it to yeah. me he goes can we listen to this now yes like, oh. <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. No, I love it. It's great. So, what's what's uh, your your son's band's name? He's in this kind of like um, they're kind of like a garagey surf rock kind of vibe band. Okay, they're called Impies, and uh, they just put out a record um, earlier this year, and it's very, it's totally, you know, like production wise, flip it on its head. It's everything about it's the opposite, you know. Um, right all room mics it's all it's real dirty sort of driven vocals and but great they're great songs and and um and they're, they're great kids and they're doing they're doing great stuff so have Excellent. I'll, I'll have to i'll have to dig that out yes most I definitely their album's called um uh spent the night with the spirit by stimpies check it out okay most definitely but you were saying about uh about australia being down under and, and being on this island isolated I, I'm drawing a lot of parallels though between Australia and Canada for the music scene. Like here, our our cities are, you know, drawn way out. You know, our countries are both similar size. Hard to get stuff out there with us. Our we send our bands to the to the, down to the U.S. or over to Europe. Yeah. Where does where do Australian bands go? I mean, you can go to New Zealand, but that's pretty small. Where's next? Japan. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think um, Japan is a is a nice little uh, hop, skip, and a jump. It's pretty easy to get to. Uh, I'd love to go to Japan with, with Cicada Stone. Um, that that would be something I would definitely like to do. I think Europe is is um is the next sort of real real uh, uh area that that bands venture out to because um. Usually, um, you know, you can travel multiple countries pretty easily. Uh, the visas mm. are, are much easier. They're much easier to, to obtain and, and manage. Uh, it's much more affordable um, to, to make it all happen in Europe. Um, America is, you know, it's just a, a, it's a nightmare. Aussie bands of, of, you know, a certain size can do it, but anything underneath, it's just, you're just pushing shit uphill. You'll never, you'll never be able to get it, get over there, get through customs play a tour and actually survive it's just not it's just not going to happen so it's really hard to get into america and canada is like you know that's right at the top you know yeah How the hell are we gonna so, <laughs> there, there is one aussie band actually um you i'm sure you got you've heard of them they're called the lazies the lazies and they have yeah the lazy they, they're from sydney and they they've pretty much relocated to canada they did so many so much touring in europe and canada um, that they basically re just rebase themselves in Canada and and um and and they're always and it's a great base for them. It's, it, it seems to have worked for them that they've 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 gotten a fan base in Canada and they're doing quite well and they can just jump over to Europe quite easily, which is great. Wow, I'm I'm, I'm learning I'm something here. Good, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look them up. Definitely. Yeah, check out the lazies. They're really good. And uh, I'm just discovering uh, Southern River Band as well. They're they're currently out on uh, on tour in Europe right now as we speak. 
and uh, they've just. Yeah, been I've heard a lot about them. I haven't heard them. No, I I haven't heard them, and everyone keeps raving about them. Um, and I I do need to check them out because they've been in, uh, they've been through Melbourne many times, and I keep hearing their name. I'm like, I've got to check that band. Out. Well, the first I heard of them was it. was a couple months ago on uh, Justin Hawkins, um, Justin Hawkins uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. And he yeah. went on there and he was totally raving about them. And then I looked them up. And next thing I know, another DJ from my radio station, he was playing them. And it was like, okay, yeah, these guys are really great. And that's what started me down this whole rabbit hole I discovered. Uh, I discovered uh, Art of Dysfunction. I discovered uh, Southern River Band. I, through that, I discovered you guys. And and just, it's it's amazing. And then discovered the uh, the website, Beautiful Car Crash, which is just leading me to all these other great uh, Australian bands. Yeah. Yeah, Byron's, a, he's great, Byron. He's a big supporter of local artists and he's always... He's always pushing um, new releases. Uh, we need guys like Byron. He's great. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to do up here in Canada with CGCM Rock Radio. We try and always push the up and coming, the new guys. You know, the, it's the 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 Iron Maidens and the Aussies and the Van Halens and stuff like that. They've already got that that foothold. We need to bring Hardly. up the next the next group. I mean, sure, okay, I've got I've got my ACDC albums up behind me, but you know what? it's yeah. yeah they're they're great they're established but it's it's all about about you guys that are the next rung down and, and yeah. coming up that's right planting the seeds for the next the next generation of um riff makers <laughs> so to speak. Mm -hmm. um if you don't invest in those in those kids um there'll be a huge hole there probably already is actually i know in australia we have um we have like summer touring acts that are like like a circuit of of a festival circuit you know and um it's just always the same shit it's always the same big established acts that have been around forever and you just you just wonder what's going to happen when they start to finish up you know like yeah it's just a huge gap there's like a 20-year gap of no opportunity um of, of artists that are just going to be wondering how they fill that void you know so um it, it, it needs to be done it really does and and any any up and coming, promising band that that's showing real potential needs to get that support. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I'm seeing a lot of change in the music industry. Like before, the standard would be, you know, you go, you play your clubs, you get discovered, boom, you release an album. Now it's a lot of indie stuff, and a lot of the artists that I've been talking to are saying, well, yeah, it's nice to release albums, but you know what? It's just as easy for us financially and uh, on a band level to just go, okay, here's a single. And then a few weeks later, go, here's another single. Here's another single. I just ride on that. Are you seeing the it's same true, shit? It's true. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, I, I have a friend um, who just who's lives nearby and we have this conversation a lot. We talk about, he he has a great analogy of, of it's, it's like a single is like a balloon. And when you um, when you hit the balloon up in the air, that's when you release a single. But but it doesn't take long before the balloon starts to come back down. That's so you got to right. hit the balloon again, you know. So basically, what he's saying is, if you want to stay, if you want to stay, uh, I guess have some sort of focus on your on your band, you've got to be able to be following up with releases more regularly and putting out an album once every three four years. I mean that model. It's, it's a dead model, you know, it's a dead model when there's so much music coming at you, um, to be, to have focus for like five minutes and then disappear again for another few years. It's, it's just not, it's not going to work. Um, which I totally, you know, and we've been doing that model, like Cicadas don't release three albums, four years apart each time. It's just, it's hard, it's hard to pull albums together. But, um, after this album's, um, done its dash, I'm very much going to be looking to look at the next next bunch of um songs and and take it as take it a song at a time because i'm not waiting four more years to put out put out new music i'm not doing that so no and and you know i i watched a little bit of um oh brian johnson's got a got a a, a documentary series where he interviews different guys and he was interviewing joe elliott from uh, from def leppard and and joe was saying something about that where you know what it's you know do we have time to be going in the studio for another five years and making an album or, you know, is it just as easy to just 
to put something together and say, you know what, this is this is pretty good. Here, let's just throw this out and see what happens. I think especially, you know, a, a, an established band like Def Leppard and even someone like Joe Elliott being the age they are, coming that that statement coming from him actually is really makes a lot of sense because they're getting old, man. They're getting yeah. really old. Yes, and, they are. And if they want to wait for five years that's five years of their life that they could have been putting out music that they haven't so you can either put out a record or you can you can maybe put out you know five singles in that time do a really good job of it five singles and work towards an album maybe i don't know but um in the case of you know old bands absolutely just get the music out absolutely i couldn't agree with you more so let's switch things up a little bit get into the into the really fun part of the interview here uh i know every dj asks uh, artists this question you're on a desert island. What's your what's your number one album that you're going to take with you to the desert island, man? Oh, that's a hard one. But <laughs> it's a hard one and an easy one. It's a hard one because there's so many amazing records. But I would definitely have to take uh, Alice in Chains' "Dirt" on that island because uh, that's the album that probably had the biggest impact on my life and shaped shaped my my life. Uh, and uh, and I can play that back to back any day of the week, like it's for the first time, it's, I've got no problem with that record. So it would have to be that one. That is an incredible album. Now that you mentioned that, I mean, every once in a while, I'll pull that out of my collection. I'll put it on and, you know, I'll listen to it for a little while and then I'll put it back in the collection, forget about it and then come back to it again. And it, every time I do that, it sounds just as fresh. It's, it's a very great album. What I like about albums of that era and even like Soundgarden, um, super unknown, they're amazing albums, not because of the not because of their productions. The productions are great, don't get me wrong. But when you when you compare the the sonics of those albums to a modern a modern rock record, like modern records are wider, deeper, clearer, uh, and I'm talking even even home, really really good home recordings. Like it's come a long way, and it just goes it just highlights the fact that a good song doesn't need a good recording. Not to say they're not good recordings, but right. a good song with a great melody, you can have an okay recording and it'll still be a fucking great song with a great melody. And I think those those records are testament to great songs first. And, you know, great productions, but great songs. Absolutely. That's the key. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, just before we wrap it up, just do one more segment here. I like to call this or that. It's a series of uh, six questions. Just you give me your choice of either of these two and we'll go from there. So the first one up, tea or coffee? Coffee. Summer or winter? Summer. Steak or seafood? <laughs> oh, uh steak festival gig or club gig uh club gig beach or amusement park beach and finally this was i i don't know if this is more of a canadian question or not but uh pineapple on pizza yes or no fuck yes pineapple <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you is there that huge debate down there in Australia where people are saying yeah. it's it's uh, it's you know it's illegal you shouldn't be doing that or it is oh for me it's a absolutely I love pineapple I love pineapple on anything so pineapple on pizza yes please definitely there and you go. people who say no yeah, they can just get fucked <laughs> that's awesome that's great uh, hey. I want to thank you, Matt Robbins from uh, from Cicada Stone, for joining us here on Rock Talk with Bob Bannister on CGCM Rock Radio. Hit us with your website. What's that? Hit us with the website? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I can't remember it. There might be a website. I'd say the Facebook page probably would be where you'd find. Oh, you know what? Linktree. Cicada Stone Linktree. Go there. Cause that's right on. Be. Right on. Hey, thank you very much, Matt. That's This has been absolutely amazing talking to you guys. And uh, you know what? I'm looking forward to hearing more stuff from Cicada Stone. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having us.